The Wedding of Mrs. Fox, Part One. There was once on a time an old fox with nine tails, who believed his wife was unfaithful to him and wished to try her. He stretched him out beneath the bench, did not move a limb, and behaved as if he were stone dead. Mrs. Fox went up to her room, shut herself in, and her maid, Miss Cat, sat by the fire and did the cooking. When it became known the old fox was dead, wooers presented themselves. The maid heard someone standing at the house door, knocking. She went and opened it, and it was young fox who said, "'What may you be about, Miss Cat? Do you sleep, or do you wake?' And she answered, "'I am not sleeping, I am waking. Wouldst thou know what I am making? I am boiling warm beer with butter so nice. Will the gentleman enter and drink some likewise?' "'No, thank you,' said the fox. "'What is Mrs. Fox doing?' And the maid replied, "'She sits all alone, and it makes her moan, "'weeping her eyes quite red, because old Mr. Fox is dead. "'Do tell her, miss, that a young fox is here "'who would like to woo her. "'Well, certainly, young sir. "'The cat goes up the stairs, trip-trap. "'The door she knocks at, tap-tap-tap. "'Mistress Fox, are you inside? "'Oh, yes, my little cat,' she cried. "'A wooer, he stands at the door out there. "'Tell me what he is like, my dear. "'Has he nine as beautiful tails as the late Mr. Fox?' Oh, no, said the cat, he is only one. Then I shall not have him. Miss Cat went downstairs and sent the wooer away. And soon afterwards there was another knock, and another fox who was at the door who wished to see and woo Mrs. Fox. He had two tails, but he fared no better than the first. And after this still more came, each with one tail more than the other, but they were all turned away, until at last one came who had nine tails, like old Mr. Fox. And when the widow heard that, she said joyfully to the cat, Open the gates and doors all wide, and carry old Mr. Fox outside. But just as the wedding was going to be solemnized, Mr. Fox stirred under the bench, cudgeled all the rabble, and drove them and Mrs. Fox out of the house. Part 2 When old Mr. Fox was dead, the wolf came as a wooer and knocked at the door, and the cat, who was servant to Mrs. Fox, opened it for him. And the wolf greeted her and said, "'Good day, Mrs. Cat of Carewit. How comes it that alone you sit? What are you making good?' And the cat replied, "'In milk I am breaking bread so sweet. Will the gentleman please come in and eat?' "'No, thank you, Mrs. Cat,' said the wolf. "'Is Mrs. Fox not at home?' And the cat said, "'She sits upstairs in her room, "'bewailing her sorrowful doom, "'bewailing her trouble so sore, "'for old Mr. Fox is no more.' And the wolf answered, "'If she's in want of a husband now, "'will it please her to step below?' The cat runs quickly up the stair "'and lets her tail fly here and there "'until she comes to the parlor door "'with her five gold rings at the door. "'She knocks, are you within, good Mistress Fox? "'If you're in want of a husband now, "'will it please you to step below?' Mrs. Fox asked, "'Has the gentleman red stockings on, and has he a pointed mouth?' "'No,' said the cat. "'Well, then he won't do for me.' And the wolf left, and then came a dog, a stag, a hare, a bear, a lion, and all the beasts of the forest, one after the other. One of the good points which old Mr. Fox had possessed was always lacking, and the cat continually had to send the wooers away. And at length came a young fox, and Mrs. Fox said, "'Has the gentleman red stockings on, and has he a little pointed mouth?' "'Well, yes,' said the cat. "'Yes, he has. "'Then let him come upstairs,' said Mrs. Fox, "'and ordered the servant to prepare the wedding feast. "'Sweep me the room as clean as you can, "'up with the window, flinging out my old man, "'for many a fine fat mouse he brought, "'yet of his wife he never thought, "'and ate up every one he caught. "'And the wedding was solemnized with young Mr. Fox, "'and there was much rejoicing and dancing, "'and if they have not left off, they are dancing still. "'The Fox and the Geese "'The Fox once came to a meadow "'in which was a flock of fine fat geese.' on which he smiled and said, I come in the nick of time. You are sitting together quite beautifully, so I can eat you up one after the other. And the geese cackled in terror, sprang up and began to beg and wail piteously for their lives. And the fox would listen to nothing and said, There is no mercy to be had. You must die. And when at length one of them took heart and said, If we poor geese are to yield up our vigorous young lives, show us the only possible favor and allow us one more prayer that we may not die in our sins and we will place ourselves in a row so you can pick yourself out the fattest. Yes, said the fox, that is reasonable and a pious request. Pray away. I will wait till we are done. And the first began a good long prayer, forever saying, Gah! Gah! And she would make no end. The second did not wait till her tip came, but she began also, Gah! Gah! And the third and fourth followed her, and soon they were all cackling together. And when they have done praying, the story shall be continued further. But at present, they are still praying without stopping. The Fox and the Horse A peasant had a faithful horse which had grown old and could do no more work, so his master would no longer give him anything to eat, but said, I can certainly make no more use of you, but I mean well by you. If you will prove yourself still strong enough to bring me a lion, I will maintain you. But now get out of my stable. 
and with that he chased him into the open country. The horse was sad and went to the forest to seek a little protection there in the weather. And the fox met him and said, Why do you hang your head so and go about all alone, friend horse? Alas, replied the horse, avarice and faithfulness do not dwell together in one home. My master has forgotten what services I have performed for him for so many years, and because I can no longer plow well, he will give me no more food and has driven me out. Without giving you a chance, cried the fox. The chance was a bad one. He said if I were strong enough to bring him a lion, he would keep me, but he knows I cannot do that. The fox said, I will help you. Lay down, stretch yourself out as if you were dead, and do not stir. The horse did as the fox instructed, and the fox went to the lion, who had his den not far off, and said, A dead horse is lying outside there. Just come with me. You can have a rich meal. The lion went with him, and when they were both standing by the horse, the fox said, After all, it's not very comfortable for you here. I'll tell you what. I will fasten it to your tail, and then you can drag it to your cave and devour it in peace. This advice pleased the lion. He lay down, and in order that the fox might tie the horse fast to him, he kept quite quiet. But the fox tied the lion's legs together with the horse's tail and twisted and fastened it all so well and strong that no strength could break it. And when he had finished his work, he tapped the horse on the shoulder and said, Pull, horse, pull! And up sprang the horse at once and drew the lion away with him. The lion began to roar so that all the birds in the forest flew out in terror. But the horse let him roar and drew him and dragged him over the country straight to his master's door. And when the master saw the lion, he was of a better mind and said to the horse, You shall stay with me and eat well until your passing. And he gave him plenty to eat until he died. The Fox and the Cat Now it happened that the cat met the fox in a forest, and as she thought to herself, he is clever and full of experience and much esteem in the world, she spoke to him in a friendly way. Good day, dear Mr. Fox. How are you? How is it with you? Are you getting through this season? The fox, full of all kinds of arrogance, looked on the cat from head to foot, and for a long time did not know whether he would give any answer or not. And at last he said, Wretched beard cleaner, piebald fool, hungry mouse hunter, what can you be thinking of? Do you venture to ask how I am getting on? What have you learned? How many arts dost thou know? I understand but one, said the cat modestly. And what is that? asked the fox. When the hounds are following me, I can spring into a tree and save myself. Is that all? said the fox. I am master of a hundred arts, and have into the bargain a sack full of cunning. You make me sorry for you. Come with me. I will teach you how people get away from hounds. And just then a hunter came with four dogs. The cat sprang nimbly up a tree and sat down on top of it where the branches and foliage quite concealed her. "'Open your sack, Mr. Fox! Open your sack!' she cried, but the dogs had already seized him and were holding him fast. "'Oh, Mr. Fox!' cried the cat. "'You with your hundred arts are left in the lurch. Had you been able to climb like me, you would not have lost your life.'" The 